look, uh, let's stop this. All right, this has been going on for far too long. It's time to put this thing to bed. Listen, you guys get so caught up in everything that Bryant Warthog said. Oh, I'm sorry. So what is it? Will Horst or something? I've been calling him Warthog for years, and it ain't going to stop now. Listen, the Warthog has led you guys down the Primrose path for I don't know how long. People be like, man, why everybody hate him? He's a great guy on television. Listen, he's a LeBron James coattail rider. LeBron loves people that's going to kiss his butt, and nobody's going to kiss it more than Brian Warthog. This guy, let me go and tell you his credibility, okay? First off, this is a guy who grew up in the same city as LeBron James, Akron, Ohio, for any idiot who don't know what that is or what that means. So he grew up in Akron, and so why he growing up in Akron? He went to the same high school as LeBron James, St. Vincent, St. Mary's. Then he ventured way out and went to college to Kent State. <laughs> so he ventured all the way out to Kent State where he can work for the Akron Beacon Journal. You know, so he can, you know, do some writing over there to tell people how St. Vincent, St. Mary's High School ain't playing enough defense. Then LeBron was in eighth grade. And he knew about LeBron because of a press release from a middle school, high school, I mean, basketball game. And they had finished second in a tournament. And he's like, I'm going to make a point to write about this local phenom who later graced the color of Sports Illustrated. No, you didn't say you were going to cover this phenom because you were a beat writer for a local newspaper that had nothing else to write about. <laughs> Who cared what St. Mary St. Vincent did? That's not ESPN material. So you wrote about, wrote about LeBron James because you're from this town. You townie. Then. He goes all the way, following him through his high school career, writing every little puff piece you can see about LeBron James in the year he was drafted, everything else. So in 2003, he became the beat writer for the same paper, the exact year LeBron was drafted by Cleveland. Then in 2008, he joined and teamed up with the Cleveland Plain Dealer newspaper. Then he was there for two years, and LeBron made his jump to take his talents to South Beach. You know what this dude did? He quit. He joined ESPN. LeBron helped him get a job on ESPN, and he went down to South Beach so he could cover LeBron in the Miami Heat for a show that they used to call the Heat Index. ESPN created the show. That's why I told you this whole ESPN thing, the interview with LeBron James, where he made his announcement, I'm taking my talents to South Beach. ESPN promoted it. They knew it was going to happen. They were in on it. They even got Warthog the job. Now, how this guy who didn't have no presence on Twitter, nowhere, a local beat writer from Cleveland, gets a job with ESPN down there covering the Miami Heat? Like, they don't have journalists in Miami? Sports journalists? You got a local beat writer? Who's writing about, middle, like, you know, like, middle school basketball? Talking about the pros in the league now? Because he went to the same school as LeBron James? He's got about as much credibility as a glass of piss. Warthog has become the worst thing in ESPN's history. He's one of the most connected to LeBron James 
players covering anything. LeBron whispers in his ear, and he comes out and regurgitates it out of his mouth. Other than that, he has no information, no insight. The only time they even bring something up about him is because LeBron then whispered it in his ear. So that's LeBron manipulating the media for his own personal agenda. Another reason we don't like LeBron. The politics he plays. So anything you hear him say about the Cleveland Cavaliers, you basically can say, okay, this is what LeBron told you to say. All right. Let's look at some of his uh, groundbreaking things. He was the one, remember when he told everybody about LeBron coming back to the Cavs in free agency? Then he talked, he spoke about, what else did he speak about? Warthog said something else, too. I remember he spoke about that. Then he spoke about uh, uh, what was some about David Griffin was given permission to speak with J.R. Smith by the New York Knicks to try to bring him to Cleveland. He broke that news. Like, yeah, that was a no-brainer, right? Then the David Blatt situation when LeBron then would end up giving him replaced and fired. So this man's job is basically over after this year. Where is he going to go now? Oh, wait a minute. He works for ESPN. He ain't got to move nowhere now. So ESPN has to have this guy. Look at Stephen A. looking at him like, you can't be serious. I got to share minutes with him. <laughs> what if we reduced ourselves to? <laughs> I mean, he's not respected. He didn't put in any work at all. He just got blessed with the job just because he knows LeBron James and went to school with LeBron. And he has no insight on anything. He only knows what LeBron James tells him. So if it's not Cleveland related, what does Warthog really know? Has anybody ever thought that? He's up on these television shows with Rachel Nich Nichols and all these people. I'm like, look, somebody be like, dude, what do you do? Who are your connect? Who talks to you besides LeBron? And somebody from Cleveland, anybody on the other team ever sat down and had a conversation with you? No. <laughs> Get this clown out of here. <laughs>